Imagine living life at the pace of the seasonal water flow of the Mekong River, the mother of waters. Aside from the periodic flooding, the flow here is slow and peaceful. Can this pace endure? This is uh, the place that we will giving stick rice to the monks. So this is the activity for the local people that we do in every morning. Just take off your shoe and leave your shoe behind. Just open the box of stick rice and make a wish before the monk coming. You make a wish by yourself. Locals and travelers alike line the pavement to give alms to Buddhist monks at first light. These monks are of the Theravada school, or lesser vehicle. They eat only what is given to them. Oh, I think they're beautiful. Yeah. They're serene and they're concentrating. They also seem to be grateful. Getting up at 5 a.m. and it was actually a spiritual experience to feed the monks. I mean, it just, their calmness and their peacefulness kind of entered us by being there and feeding them at that hour of the morning. Right now we just go to the fresh morning market where you can see the fresh product because uh, the people that uh, come to get the fresh product come to selling at the fresh market over here. Farmers from the interior join fishermen from the Mekong River at the daily morning markets. Here, the essential components of a typical Laotian meal can be purchased, along with other delicacies. I love to go grocery shopping, but I don't think rat would be on my list here. Dried, dried rat. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> I appreciate it, yes. <laughs> you never know, it might be delicious. We have seen many markets in the world, and it, this is one of the most interesting. I love my culture. I love to see when they do uh, interact with the local people. I was. It was very easy. Pot cut cow. Cut cow. Cut cow. He loves his people. He wants to make sure that we have a full understanding. Very eager to uh, for us to ask questions. He's got that inner quality about him. I found it. Mint. I'm going to have some mint tea this morning. <laughs> oh, very nice. <laughs> Beautiful. I can't grow anything like that in Minneapolis. No. Long Prabang is a metropolis of 50,000 residents. Most of the Laotian population, however, resides in rural villages. Today is not the second departure. We're going to visit the rural areas. So we will going to visit the school and also we do round table discussions after that hand-on experience. Nearly all smaller settlements are ethnically homogenous. Each makes most of their own clothing, crafts and tools. They raise the crops and livestock they need. Surplus is traded for kerosene, medicines and household necessities. It's wonderful to continue the traditions of their tribes and their Obviously the patterns probably passed down from mother to daughter, grandmother to daughter to mother. Beautiful, beautiful, intricate work. And they feel resourceful and it brings income into their village and a sense of self-reliance. She's marvelous and she is very anxious to learn and to enjoy being together. She's taking me to her school. Basic primary schooling in Laos lasts just five years. Less than half of these children continue on to a secondary school, a trend the government is committed to improving, especially for girls who have fewer opportunities to escape rural life. And the kids are so sweet. And they're really learning. They know the alphabet in English, and numbers. Eight, nine, ten, 
very good. Is she very well? Such potential. A little teary eyed, but such potential in those children. And they're eager. And it's due to such a fine teacher that cares about them. We are privileged to be able to impact these children's life. They are beautiful, wonderful, intelligent children. My boy. <laughs> Over 40% of the population of Laos is composed of the Hmong and other indigenous hill tribes. We have a Hmong population in Minneapolis-St. Paul of something like 70,000. And so we know a lot of Hmong people. And in fact, we, uh, Dave and I took a course on the Hmong culture and we're really interested in the Hmong people. The Hmong people have migrated and settled throughout Southeast Asia and China. While adapting to life in the countries in which they now reside, they have maintained their customs and ways of life, such as playing traditional music on the K. But the people are just, they're lovely. They're so warm and friendly and welcoming. Hmong have no known written history. The Mekong River flows 3,000 miles through China, Burma, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. It's one of those places where you never really thought you'd ever be in your life, and here I am on the Mekong River. In Laos, the Mekong is a major transit route, with boats ferrying goods and people from Hue Sai in the north to Bong Prabong, Vientiane, and beyond. During the rainy season, roads are often impassable, making the river route the only option. This is we call the Paru Cave. This cave used to be the place that the ancient people they used this place to respect to the landscape spirit. The Buddha caves can be found about two hours upstream from Long Prabang, inside hundreds of tiny wooden Buddha figures, feature different positions such as meditation, teaching, peace, rain, and reclining, also known as nirvana. Well, it was extraordinary. Um, I thought that the day in the life uh, that was done was probably one of the best organized that uh, uh, my wife and I have been on. Laos is truly an ancient kingdom, one that is now advancing to join hands with the rest of the global community. It's just, everywhere you look, there, there's pride. There are hard workers and there's pride. Oat does such a miraculous job of introducing us to other cultures because we're a world community. Oat's mission to help in the world came through strong, more strongly today than it ever has, and I think it is getting broader and more involved, and that is wonderful. And here, it's just beautiful. They take care of everybody. That's a lot to be said for humanity.